What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. And if this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. This is another video in my R tutorial series. If you've seen other videos in this series so far, which I do strongly recommend, by the way, I've covered various packages in the tidyverse. So things like dplyr for data manipulation, uh, ggplot2 for visualizing data, uh, string r, luberdate for all these data types like character strings and date times, which are a little bit more difficult to, uh, to work with, and then other more basic things like your base R functions, as well as all the different objects and data types inside of R. Well, we're going to do something fun today, which is linear models. So I'm going to walk you through how to run linear regression and logistic regression, what exactly is being outputted, so how to exactly interpret the results, and what kind of just objects in the first place you're being given, and then how to work with these things in a tidy format. So before we get started here, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This script, as always, is going to be available on my GitHub repo. That's going to be linked in the description of this video. And then if you guys would be willing to support me over on Patreon, that's massively appreciated as always. The link to do that will be in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to use two different data sets here. Those are the MT cars data set. That's a standard data set out of the tidyverse. And then we're also going to use this credit card data set. It's a nice data set that comes out of the AER package. We're going to come back to that later in this tutorial for the logistic regression example. There's documentation on these data sets available for nice stuff like variable descriptions. Those links are going to be available both in the description of the video as well as uh, in the script. But we're going to start off with this empty cars data set. And specifically, we want to fit a linear regression treating the MPG variable as the dependent variable. And then however many other uh, variables that we can out of that data set to be our independent variables, that is our predictors. So with any type of modeling exercise, the first thing that I like to do is just run a basic uh, descriptive summary of my variables. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. Just use the summary function on MT cars. So when you look at all these various uh, variables here, so one thing that I'm looking for here uh, is serious outliers, and I'm not seeing anything too bad here. Uh, but one thing I'm noticing here is that the CYL variable, that's cylinders, uh, this VS thing, it's either zero or one. Uh, there's AM, which is also zero or one. And then gears. This is taking on values of three, four, and five. So. It's very obvious, even if you're not a car person, uh, that these are not numerical variables. They shouldn't be coded that way. They should be treated as categorical variables, that is, factors. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that change to them. One thing I'm not getting into uh, in this tutorial is multicollinearity, because that's pretty much a subject for a separate tutorial in and of itself. So just uh, just changing these numerics into factors for now, because that is a super common mistake that people make when they're starting off with, uh, with linear modeling. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and fit a linear model. Our function for doing that is this LM function here. And there's just two key arguments that we need to know for that. The first argument is a formula. Second argument is the uh, is the data. So the data is just empty cars, and you'll notice I have MPG uh, tilde uh, period here. That tilde period thing, that's just a shorthand notation for use all the uh, other variables in the whole data set. So convenient thing, we're storing this output into an object called linreg. Now, we call this thing, and it's going to output uh, the model call. So that's basically exactly this line of code that we ran up here before. Uh, but then the uh, slope coefficients here. So that's, that's all well and good. That's nice. 
Uh, but if you're getting into this, you probably want more information than that. So generally speaking, when you create these LM objects, uh, you don't want to just call this, uh, this LM object. You actually want to call a summary of the object. That's exactly what we're going to do, but there are a couple cool things that I want to show you first. So first and foremost, if you look at these two lines of code, notice I'm setting this up a little bit differently than I did the first time around. So I'm not writing the formula directly inside of the LM function. I'm instead defining this formula object first. All that is is a character string, and then I'm going to pass that uh, formula object into LM here. Now I should point out, this formula object here, like there is an actual class called formula, but the LM function is pretty smart. So if it sees a character string like this that can be coerced into a formula, it's going to automatically do that. So that's really awesome. It's not something that you have to worry about for LM and GLM, but it is an issue with things like random forest and stuff, which we'll get to in later tutorials. Now, there's a couple other things that I'm doing inside this formula. You'll notice that I want to model on the square root of this DISP variable. And I also have this HP uh, colon WT thing going on here because I want to just create an interaction term here. That's uh, how you would set that up if you care about interaction terms. So I'm going to do that here. So I did all that. I'm going to run this summary function. Now, if you just take a look at this, uh, give it a second to load, this is much more informative. So we have the model call like we did before. We have a five number summary of the residuals if you care about that kind of information. And then for all of our uh, slope estimates here, we have the actual estimate, we have the standard error of that estimate, we have the corresponding T value, and we have the corresponding p-value for that estimate so we know if it's statistically uh, significantly different than zero. So you have your standard uh, significance codes here for uh, knowing are you significant at the 0.1 level, 0.05 level, etc, etc, etc. You have the residual standard error. That's the average size of the residuals. That's basically your root mean square error. You have your multiple R squared and adjusted R squared. And then the F statistic for the overall model fit as well as corresponding p-value. So that's all well and good and everything. This is super informative. But a question you might be wondering is, what exactly is this? Like in terms of R objects that we're familiar with, like lists and data frames and things like that, like what exactly is this? And then suppose we want to extract parts of this output, like let's say the slope estimates or multiple R squared, whatever it is, how exactly would we go about doing that? Well, it's super important to understand the structure of these things and what exactly all these objects are. So I'm going to make you struggle with this for a little bit by showing you some things, and then I'm going to show you a super easy way to do stuff like this using the tidyverse, essentially. So we're going to start by using the str function to examine the structure of the linear regression model object. So it's running. But even while this thing is running, it should be fairly apparent to you. This thing is kind of a mess. Like you can start to see things like, well, it is a list, but it's a list of all these things like um, a numerical vector of coefficients, residuals, effects, uh, you've got your fitted values, and all this other stuff going on here, like the QR here is a list. This is a little bit challenging to work to work with. It's still running here. Um, you've got a model object which is returned at the end. So at the end, you're going to actually get back your data frame as part of the structure uh, of the linear regression object. So as in so far as just looking at the structure of these things is concerned, it is a little bit more intuitive to work directly with the structure of the summary of the linear regression. Rather than working with the structure of the linear regression, let's work with the structure of the summary. So you may want to save that as its own object up front, but 
we're just going to call the structure here. We've got things like the call, the terms, the residuals, the coefficients, a lot of other nice stuff. R squared, adjusted R squared, the F statistic, you get the idea. So this is stuff that you can fairly clearly extract if you're familiar with working with lists. So what I want to do here is, let's say for all these parameters here, so this whole table with your coefficients, you've got your slope estimates, the standard error, the t-value, and all that kind of stuff. Let's say I want to return this table here, and then I want to return it in terms of the t-value. So I want to sort by t-value in descending order by absolute value. So let's say I want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a summary of linear regression. Let's save that as its own object. I'm going to create a data frame based on uh, the coefficients. Because remember, this summary list thing, it's just going to be a list. So we can extract coefficients separately. So we're going to do that. Save that as its own data frame called COF. And now that's just a data frame we can work with. Let's see what we get. You'll notice that I arranged by descending absolute value of t dot value because in this whole process of creating a data frame, uh, the names of these things got changed around. But here we go. We've got this. We've got descending order of the absolute value of the t statistics. So that is one way that you can work with this output directly. Now that's the hard way. I'm going to show you the easy way next. There's a package called Broom. It's generally considered to be part of the tidyverse family of packages, but you do need to call it separately from the actual tidyverse as I did at the beginning of this video. So there are three key functions from here and we're gonna see all of them. The first one is this tidy function and it's going to return a tidy data frame. All this is is a tidy version of the exact same data that we extracted before, but notice that this is way easier. All I did was one single line of code. I just used this tidy function, that's it. And look at that, I've got the estimate of the slope parameters, standard error, t-statistic, p-value, super straightforward, clean, tidy, this is awesome. There's this glance function, which is gonna give us some of this useful uh, summary information. So we've got r-squared, adjusted r-squared, sigma, the F statistic, the P value, the degrees of freedom, the log likelihood, the AIC, let's keep going, BIC, the deviance, the degrees of freedom of the residuals, number of observations, this is awesome. So one last uh, function to know is the augment function, and this is gonna pass in two arguments. So we've got the model object, then you want a data object, and it's going to pass a bunch of new variables into your original data set. So if we scroll to the right here, notice you've got a lot new, really awesome variables here. So you've got the fitted values, uh, the residuals, et cetera, et cetera. This is really, really awesome. Uh, it's much, much easier than working with all this stuff by hand using uh, the nature of these objects as they're created by uh, you know, the structure function and the linear model function. But you need to know that that's the hard way of doing it just so you know what you're actually getting out of these functions. All right, next I'm gonna show you a logistic regression. And this is where we're gonna use the credit card data set. Just like we did before, I'm going to just, before doing any kind of modeling effort, I am going to run a summary on the uh, credit card data set. This card variable here, that is whether the card was issued or not, is going to be our dependent variable here. And I'm going to observe these things for uh, issues. Now, there are a few uh, problems that I wanna point out here. So first of all, this share variable, uh, it's in a proportion form, 
Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I don't like interpreting proportions when I'm looking at my uh, model output. I would much rather look at percentages. So I'm just gonna scale it up by a factor of, uh, of 100. Notice this major cards variable here. It's another zero one sort of thing, so it should be a factor uh, rather than a numeric. Then you've got this expenditure variable here. So as I look for outliers, I'm looking for things that are on the more extreme side. And when I see that the mean is 185, but the median is 101, the third quartile is 249, but you have this 3099 outlier over here. Uh, that's a little bit on the outlying side. Now, there's a number of ways that you can address uh, outliers. I'm just going to exclude it from the model. That's just the simple, quick, and lazy way of doing it. So when I create this formula here, expenditure is not going to be a part of it. So just like before, I'm going to create this formula object here. It's a character string. Just like before, it's going to be coerced into a formula object. Now we're going to use the GLM um, function here instead of LM. Now we're going to take three different arguments here. First is the formula. Second is the family. So uh, for those of you unfamiliar with uh, generalized linear models in general, a, this basically corresponds to the link function. So a logistic regression is gonna have a binomial uh, link function. Uh, by contrast, a log linear model would have a Poisson uh, link function. So you would pass family equals Poisson here, but that's totally the subject for a different tutorial. And we're going to pass data equals credit card here. So we're just going to uh, run the summary of that. And just like before, we're going to get really, really nice looking output. So a five number summary of the deviance residuals. We've got the same type of table that we had before with your estimates of the slope parameters with their corresponding standard errors. There are Z values and corresponding P values. And now if you're familiar with the difference between linear and logistic regression, you know some of the goodness of fit statistics are different. You've got things like the null and residual deviance that are outputted here with their corresponding degrees of freedom as well as the AIC. And so I'm going to leave you there. In this tutorial, you saw how to create linear regressions, as well as how to access the summary of them for all the more detailed information, how to actually work with the model objects which are returned, and then how to work with them more easily using a tidy sort of format. And then lastly, how to create a generalized linear model, specifically in this case, a logistic regression. Now, this is some of the most fun stuff I think most people would agree that you're going to do in R. Remember that R was built by statisticians for other statisticians. And in future tutorials, we're going to go a lot deeper than this. But for now, I'm going to leave you there. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, again, hit the like button, consider sharing it, and then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.